Oh, hey there, Legion. It's the Monday after a dev stream, so you know we got a recap and review for you. This stream was another good one, mainly focusing on three things future me already likely put in the title. Damage 3.0, Ghouls, and Eidolons. So I figure we'll go through them in that order, and then whatever's left over will be the one-off bits at the end. Okie dokie. Damage 3.0 is a curious beast, as it's been under the surface for a few years now and only popping its head above water semi-annually. We know they've been vocally against mandatory mods since at least September. September 2015. They've admitted they needed to rebalance things across the board, though it was a very daunting task mid and again late 2016, only to abandon that entirely during the dark time period of early 2017. Well then out of the blue they did a primary weapon balance pass with Octavia's release in March, and then a secondary and melee throwing weapon pass with Haro in June. Then this livestream they finally said with the release of the new damage shifting Warframe Korra, they're rebalancing the damage types themselves. Basically, they're going to be making each weapon's damage split of puncture, impact, and slash factor into how much damage it actually does on the proc. Also, procs themselves will now scale as currently they only apply 30% and will go up to 90. Now, I do believe that is 90% of the proc damage type and not the entire weapon's damage as it stands now. So this will of course shake up the meta a bit, but it'll also make other weapons actually usable and status build fans quite happy. They even hinted something might happen when you have over 100% status chance, but didn't say. They did say they plan to improve damage procs across all types, scaling on only the damage but the proc effects themselves. For example, impact staggers enemies and that's about it. Now it'll go from one stagger to a double stagger to knocking them to the ground. Another example was electric procs can stun enemies as they do now, but then turn them into a battery and zap other enemies nearby, similar to Volt's ultimate. I'd still like to see serration get baked into each weapon and less popular mods buffed or at least merged together via nightmare or corrupted mod thing, but one step at a time. Ghouls are on the way and of plenty. The short version is they pop out of the ground and bum rush you incessantly, very much like ghouls in Fallout 4. Only these are gonna have flamethrowers and mines strapped to their arms and can even burrow underground to close the distance. DE said when you kill them they're gonna share a connection to the D&D &D enemy of the same name, but said it was not paralysis. I suspect it's a stun on kill as Reb was stunlocked for quite some time when fighting them. One in particular sported a two-handed chainsaw that rode it into combat. Good news there is we'll be able to use that weapon sometime next year. I myself cannot wait to be a glorious beast and ride that headfirst into a door that doesn't open on time. As for the ghouls themselves, we'll be running into them sometime before Christmas. Eidolons. It's bigger. It's better. Ladies and gentlemen, it's two Megalists. The Megalist is not only bigger than the Terrorist, it's designed to counter the way we take down the Terrorist. Each step the Mega takes deals AoE damage for one. And also it has a stone sword in place of its tree stump and other new attacks to keep us on our toes. They also mention there might be an Eidolon Hunt matchmaking option in the works, which will be helpful. Now for the random bits. To make Mirages 2 work better on the plains and future landscapes, it'll spawn on a gift. If light, it'll blind. Dark, it'll explode. It'll synergize with Hall of Mirrors, but of course the clone's copies are gonna do less damage or duration. The sudden rework mention got folks to suspect Mirage is next up on that Prime Access list, but Mesa still has a shot. Sorry, Zef. Christmas is a big seller, and Turkey Frame is celebrated a month earlier. They also mentioned the Prime Unvaulting is going to include Frost and Ember again this year, which is a bit odd, but one more unannounced Prime will be there as well. The Focus Rework is getting a full balance pass before the upcoming respec and refund, as they're hoping this is going to be the last time they got to do that. They are lowering costs across the board and bringing down the highest caps as well. Dev Workshop on it will arrive when it's close to getting done. They want to do a full rundown on each Sentinel and companion, from stats to abilities, and of course a vacuum was talked about, so potential 2.0 from them here. Might even get the plane's bird as an option after that. The crosshair tech is getting updated, it'll get a fancier effect to let you know when you hit enemies. The next round of Tanagen is the biggest yet, looking to be over 30 items added with this round, so it's taken them a bit to verify each on that list. Both the Orkin fan's melee weapon and Tenno's shotgun are expected to arrive before the end of the year, and of course Umbra, 
will be sometime next year. At this point, I don't think anyone's surprised on that one. But what surprised you, Legion? Let me know in the comments below. I think the two-handed chainsaw is my highlight of the stream. I mean, don't get me wrong, Damage 3.0 is long overdue, but the idea of a chainsaw motorcycle is a bit more enticing. Ring the bell to stay up to date and tap that like if this put a smile on your face. As always, thank you for watching, and catch you next time, Legion. Take care.